Welcome back. In this video, we're going to walk through how to bring LiDAR data into Metashape and align it with a set of photos that we have of the same area. So uh, let's go ahead and dig in. First thing we're going to do is import our LiDAR data. So uh, of course we could do this uh, from the file menu, import and uh, point cloud. Um, the LiDAR data that we have, we collected with our yellow scan uh, Surveyor Ultra 3 uh, over Parker Farm this summer at the same time we were doing some other data collection. So uh, I'm going to grab that, bring that in, check your coordinate system, make sure it's correct, it matches what uh, you think it should be for the LiDAR. Uh, everything else looks okay. Make sure that uh, this button is checked to use as laser scans and uh, go ahead and hit OK. It'll uh, take a second to import this. All right, now that that's done loading, uh, we can take a look around here with our LiDAR. Uh, this was colorized in CloudStation with the photos that were collected on the LiDAR unit. So uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. I went ahead and trimmed it to the, uh, uh, to the area so we had a nice kind of clean representation there. But uh, yep, pretty. Uh, it's LiDAR data. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is to make sure that we get these uh, LiDAR data co-registered to, um, to the photos that we're going to get. We're going to use our set of ground control points that we, uh, that we have here. I can zoom in. You can see here's a ground control target up here in the, in the corner. Um, so to do that, I'm going to flip over to my reference window. I'm going to load the ground control file that we've got. Uh, make sure this is all okay. My labels line up where they're supposed to here. Okay, looks good. Bring that in. And then I'll just say yes to all to create all the markers that we need. Now, uh, Metashape's going to put these in sort of approximate positions, and uh, we need to get these lined up with our uh, with our LiDAR data as well. Now we um, we had a base station running when we collected the LiDAR data. It was uh, right here next to uh, the, the one vehicle uh, on top of a survey marker, but I didn't do any opus correction or, or other um, uh, post-processing of that uh, base station data. So we just, I, I did the LiDAR processing just off of the raw base station file. So there's a little bit of a, a misalignment um, of the LiDAR data to our uh, uh, ground control targets, but that's okay, we can, uh, we, we can deal with that uh, here. So what I'm gonna do is zoom in here to my, whoops, to my ground control targets and uh, just hover over the center of that, right click on it, and choose place marker to, uh, to move my ground control marker where it needs to be. And then we can zoom out, uh, come into my next marker here, or my next target, place marker like that. Um, and whoops, um, I just wanna go ahead and do that for all uh, of the other markers. I'll go ahead and uh, pause the video here so you don't have to sit through and watch me do all of these and I'll start it back up when I'm done so we can take the next step together. Okay, I've got all of my ground control markers uh, assigned to where the targets are and let me show you a little trick with this. Um, if I right click on one of these markers and choose center view, it, it pans the model to the middle and then I can zoom in on this area. Um, as long as I'm sort of directly over this uh, it, like the spots directly in the middle, um, I can zoom in and out really easy and also uh, make sure that you're viewing the model from sort of top down, right? So if you're on the side, it's going to uh, sort of compromise your ability to put that marker in the right place. In that case, you can just hit the seven key and it will give you that, that top down view and then you can uh, set that marker in exactly where it needs to be on that, on that target. If you're off a little bit, it's going to reflect in the overall error uh, of your of your model, uh, the best that you can get. Now, um, 
all we're doing is shifting the the whole sort of point cloud around at this point we're not stretching it or sort of changing the, the, the transformation at all so if we scroll over here on our uh, reference pane and look at our overall error that those error numbers or that overall error number should change uh, in real time as you're uh, adjusting these markers and moving them around okay so at this point we should be uh, I mean that's about five and a half centimeters of, of total error uh, for for this size and and given the the sort of ground control that we have and the distribution of the ground control I'm, I'm pretty happy with that um, we can certainly work with that um, as a as a result so at this point the next step uh, once we have the lidar aligned to our ground control the next step is going to be to add our photos and align those so we're going to go ahead and add our uh, ground or our, our uh, rgb photos that we took um, for this date uh, these are single camera photos bring those in okay good they show up in the right spot so i will go ahead and align these photos. Um, we can choose medium accuracy for this. Uh, you know, I'll leave the rest of these as default values. That should be fine for what we're doing. And I will hit OK. This is going to take a couple minutes to run, so I'll go ahead and pause here, and then we'll pick up again when it's done. All right, our photos have finished aligning, so uh, uh, we can take a look at those. And uh, let's turn our camera actually we have a problem here and, th and this problem is due to the um, the drone that we shot these photos with is our Matrice M210 with the Zenmuse X5S camera on it and for some reason the, G the altitude on the GPS of that drone is always off and so what you get is this sort of situation where it's aligned these photos and the altitude for the photos themselves and the ground is just way below where it needs to be so um, yeah you can you can see here that um, I've got uh, uh, yeah quite an elevation difference that we're gonna have to deal with but that's okay we can deal with that with the uh, uh, with the ground control process now the, the the trick is normally in assigning the ground control I would come over to the reference pane and I would choose uh, you know, filter photos by marker, right? But if I do that, I don't get anything in the tray at the bottom because the photos are lower in altitude than the markers are, okay? So that, that's not gonna work. The workaround for this is to uh, right click on a point here in the model window and choose filter photos by point. Okay, now it's gonna give me all the photos that sort of correspond to this point or this region so I can come into each one of these, um, zoom in here, and uh, place my marker. Okay, um, I can come back over here to the next photo, place the marker for that one. All right. Now, um, it still doesn't have enough information to suggest markers on all of the other um, photos, even for that point. Um, but if I go ahead and I do that process for just two photos on each one of these markers, um, then it will get it enough information. Metashape will have enough information to sort of auto suggest or auto assign these uh, ground control points. So I'm going to do that just for each one of these. Um, go through and, uh, and and just tag two of them initially on here. That's ground control six. Um, there we go. Okay, I'll go ahead and finish this up and then come back and show you the, the next step in the process. Okay, I've assigned markers to two of the photos for each of my ground control points. So the next step, actually first, let's turn this um, laser scan off here. It's this button on the toolbar. That'll turn that off and then we can see what we're, what we're doing here. Um, now if I come over here and update my transform, um, it should go ahead and start suggesting uh, 
ground control uh, markers and all the rest of my photos. Yeah, so, so here they are, they're showing up here. So now I'll come back through each one of my photos. I can do filter by marker and it will uh, pop up all of my photos and then I can just um, drag the, uh, the ground control into the right place for each of these. Uh, I like to do six photos or, or sort of tag each ground control on at least six photos. Um, I just feel like that gives a good result. Um, it's a nice optimization between the time it takes to do all this and the, and the quality of the result. Um, you can keep track of it over here on the number of projections that you have. Um, now this will show as one more uh, than the number you actually have on the photos because remember we did a projection for the, the LiDAR uh, point cloud as well. Okay, so these projections, you have to think of this as like seven minus one, we've tagged six of these photos. Okay, so uh, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, do my uh, ground control on the rest of my photos and we'll come back and take the next step together. All right, I've got all of my ground control uh, identified on the photos like I need to. And uh, next step would be to update the transform and do some optimization to my sparse cloud. So if I look over here, right now I'm sitting at about 18 centimeters of error. Uh, let's update the transform here and see what that does. Okay, it takes it down a little bit to uh, um, about 16 centimeters. Um, let's run a an optimization on this model and see what that buys us. Okay, good. So that's taken us down now to seven centimeters uh, error with these uh, ground control points. Uh, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that uh, in terms of a of a product. So now the next step uh, would be actually the next step would be to save our project. How about that? So let's go ahead and uh, just save that here before we go on. Uh, but the next step is going to be, well, normally in, in a, a sort of Metashape project, right, the next step would be to either create a dense cloud or a uh, mesh model um, from our aligned photos from our sparse point cloud stereo model. Um, and then use that uh, either model or that DEM or DEM from that point cloud to ortho rectify our photos. But we already have a really high quality uh, elevation model, right? We have we have lidar data. Uh, let's turn that back on here. Okay. Oh, and by the way, if I tip this up now, you can see that these align. Probably some cleanup I could do in there, but we won't worry about that for right now. All right. Um, Let's, uh, just while we're here, let's go ahead and uh, rotate our uh, sort of processing region and resize that so we've got a, um, an area that's kind of tighter into our ground control and, and it'll give us sort of a nice looking product at the end. This will also cut down on the processing time that it takes to run these uh, steps. Okay, so um, so yeah, we can uh, do our ortho rectification of our photos and create our ortho mosaic directly from the LiDAR point cloud here. So um, let's go ahead and, uh, and try that. I'll switch back over to the workplace. Uh, let's expand that so we can see what we're looking at. Okay, and then under workflow, I can just jump straight to build ortho mosaic. Um, Remember, you always want to build your, your raster products in a projected coordinate system. So I'm going to pick UTM-11. And for our surface, right, normally we would pick like DEM for this in uh, the normal workflow that we would do. But here we're going to choose the laser scan, the LiDAR data. Okay, uh, We can leave these other things uh, as defaults. And I'll go ahead and hit OK. This is going to take a little bit of time to run. So uh, I'll pause this and then we'll come back uh, at that point and look at what's next. All right, so that's finished running. Uh, we can uh, flip over here now and look at our ortho mosaic. Looks pretty nice. Um, it, uh, it will have some um, uh, voids in it in sort of vegetation areas. 
Um, that just comes from using the, uh, the point cloud as the elevation source here. If we build a DEM for it and then ortho uh, rectified based off the DEM, it would fill these in. But these could be like those sort of smudge looking areas that you get in, uh, uh, in, in ortho mosaics when stuff has moved, um, like vegetation that's blown around or moved during the uh, um, the, the taking of the photos, right? So, but but in general, looks pretty good. Pretty pretty happy with that. All right. So the next thing that we want to do for this lab exercise is just spend a little bit of time looking at differences between the lidar point cloud and a photogrammetric point cloud. So for this, we want to build a dense cloud from our photos. So we'll come up to workflow, we'll choose build point cloud. Um, you know, we can do a, uh, you can do a low quality if you want. Uh, we'll do a medium quality uh, here and uh, go ahead and hit okay on this. It'll take a while to run this um, point cloud because it's building the depth maps and then uh, uh, calculating the the dense cloud from uh, from that, but I'll go ahead and hit OK, and then we'll come back and look at how these two point clouds are different. All right, our dense cloud is done, so uh, we can go ahead and take a look at that. Let's make sure and turn our laser scan off, and there we go. Our dense cloud on. Uh, let's look at the colors here too. There you go. That's pretty nice. All right, so. Uh, take a little bit of time and just zoom in and around on this and, and compare this to the to the laser scan for that same area, right? Okay, these should be lined up pretty well against each other because we had the ground control points. Um, some of the things that I'm noticing right away, um, of course the LiDAR data is going to give us a much more complete representation of the the trees in this little woodlot, right? Um, no surprise, you know, photogrammetry, especially the way we collected this uh, this mission, right, is is only going to be able to do so well with these uh, with these trees. Um, look at uh, especially some areas like this in the in the center here. Okay, compare that to the uh, to the laser scan for that area, right? So there's a whole tree right here that's uh, that's basically missing on the LiDAR uh, or on the sort of photogram photogrammetry point cloud, okay? Um, there may be reasons for that, you know, it could be filtering that was happening in the photos, it could be that this was a fairly um, sparse tree, not a lot of uh, biomass on it, right? There could be any number of reasons, but, um, you know, it's worth spending some time looking around at these uh, different aspects of the image and see how uh, how the photogrammetric point cloud is representing things compared to the LiDAR point cloud. All right, and then the last things that we want to do here, uh, let's create a, uh, an elevation model for, um, the, uh, for the photogrammetric point cloud, and we're going to create a set of point or, uh, elevation models for the LiDAR point cloud too. So I'm going to right click on here, go to process, whoops, sorry. Uh, let me come back up here. We'll do it uh, this way. So we'll go to workflow, build DEM. Uh, remember, we're going to build raster products in projected coordinate systems. Uh, the source for this is going to be the point cloud, okay, as opposed to the laser scan. So point cloud. And uh, we're going to use all the classes here. That's going to give us a digital surface model. Okay, there's our digital surface model. Uh, okay, so we're going to build multiples of these, so we're going to just come right in here and rename this to um, Photo DSM for digital surface model, right? And then we're going to let's come in and build another DEM again, projected coordinate system. This time we're going to use the laser scan for it and uh, hit OK for there, let it build its DEM. Okay, and then uh, here it is. I'm gonna 
rename that one to LiDAR DSM, okay? And then uh, we can do a, uh, let's select the photo one, do a transform DEM, and then calculate a difference between that and the LiDAR DSM, okay? And then uh, we will rename that one to be um, DSM difference. Okay, so here's our DEM difference. So you can kind of look through here and, and look at where the big differences are between these DEMs. So obviously we have full trees that we're missing in the uh, um, photogrammetric DEM that we uh, do have in the in the LiDAR one. So it's you know interesting to kind of scroll around here and see what the differences are. The last thing that we want to do for this lab exercise is create a set of digital terrain models. Now to do the terrain model, you're going to need to do a ground point classification for the photogrammetric point cloud. And uh, if you don't remember how to do that, go back and check the previous labs, uh, I want to say it's lab 6, I think it was, uh, where we did that. Um, I'll let you do that on your own. I'm not going to work through that uh, process right now in the interest of time, but I will show you um, when you go in to build your DEM, we can do this for the, uh, uh, for the LiDAR point cloud because the ground points are already classified in the LiDAR. Okay, So we're going to select our, of course, make sure we have projected coordinate system, select our laser scan as our source, and then for our point classes here, normally it, we would just leave it as default to use all of the points, but we're going to hit select. And then we will um, uncheck these so that all we have selected are our ground points. And then when I hit OK here, it will build a new DEM for me of just those ground points. All right, so there's and we would call this our digital terrain model. Now, you know, we can argue about how good of a job that we did in classifying those ground points, but for the purposes of this lab, I think this will be adequate. So, um, again, rename this one right away. So this is going to be LiDAR DTM for digital terrain model. So do a ground point classification for your photogrammetric point cloud, that guy right there, and then um, go ahead and create a digital terrain model for the uh, photogrammetric um, uh, data set, and then do a difference between your photogrammetric terrain model and your LiDAR terrain model as well. All right. So that's it for this lab, uh, bringing LiDAR in and, and getting it co-registered and aligned with our photos, uh, and then using it as the elevation source for orthorectification. Um, if you're in the class, then um, you know get those uh, that last uh, DEM difference done, and uh, the next step would be just to fill out the questions for lab and get that submitted. So hopefully this uh, was helpful to you, and uh, you can start to see how we can use LiDAR and photogrammetry together. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm.